Doug Ford lied to you. Doug Ford and his Ontario PCs lied to you. They lied to you, or they obscured their intentions, or both. And they did that for one reason above all. Because they knew if they spoke the truth, they would lose. That their ideas would be exposed for how unpopular they actually are. That voters would understand what was facing them, and they would make a different choice. That Ontarians would reject their politics of privatization and cuts and attacks on our local democracy. They would reject that. So they didn't run on it. And that's the simple truth. Let's look back to 2014. Back in 2014, the Conservatives in Ontario were led by Tim Hudak, who, you know, you could say a lot about him. He was transparent with his objectives for Ontario. He wanted to take Ontario in a conservative direction. And he proposed conservative policies. His centerpiece, in some ways, was his pledge to cut 100,000 public service jobs to, in a sense, shift Ontario in a more private sector-oriented direction. Now, again, you could be against that, but he offered a clear vision to the voters. And they trounced him at the polls. The Liberals won a majority government, um, taking almost all of their, their new support from the Conservatives. Uh, you know, the NDP largely broke even in that election. So that was really Ontarians looking at what the Conservatives were offering and rejecting it outright. Rejecting it outright. So we fast forward four years later, and now Doug Ford's leader of the Progressive Conservatives in Ontario. And I've seen a lot of people call Doug Ford a stupid man. But he's not stupid. You might call him uncultured, maybe a little bit gruff, but he's not dumb. Doug Ford and his people, they learned something from Tim Hudak's 2014 campaign. And they learned one thing above all. That Tim Hudak's fatal failing was that he told the truth. Was that he was honest with the voters about his intentions. That's what did him in, above all. That's what did it. That the voters heard what he wanted and said, I don't like that. It's too much, too radical, it's too conservative. I don't like that. So Ford did the exact opposite. Didn't run with a platform. Didn't run with a proposed budget. Had a few policies, you know, buck a beer, carbon tax, anti-carbon tax, things like that. Had a few policies here and there, but largely ran without any sort of commitment or policy. Because he knew... All the things he wanted to do, all the things he wanted to do were unpopular. All of the major things were unpopular. So when you see attacks on kindergarten, when you see attacks on healthcare, when you see attacks, attacks on student loans, when you see attacks on the rent control, when you see attacks on the green belt, when you see attacks on the local democracy, when you see attacks on any one of these things, that have kind of characterized the Ford government thus far, you realize they weren't in the platform. Heck, some of the things that the Ford government's promised during the election, they just blatantly lied about. They said they wouldn't cancel the basic income pilot, and they did. They did. You know, they, they made these promises knowing that they don't need to keep them. Because the game is rigged. The game is rigged. The way our system works is if you get 35 to 40 percent of the vote, depending on the election, you could find yourself with absolute power for half a decade. And then you could do what you want. And it didn't it doesn't matter if the voters gave you the mandate to make that change. Doug Ford had a mandate for car, fighting the carbon tax and a buck of beer. That's what he had a mandate for and a couple other things. But that's basically it. He had a mandate to do those couple things. Not much else. Certainly doesn't have a mandate to tear down our public health care system. Certainly doesn't have a mandate to attack public education. He doesn't have it. But our system doesn't work on, you know, uh, accountability to the voters. It works on your ability to command a majority in the House of Commons. What I'm asking for is something in the kind of short, medium, and perhaps longer term. In the short term, we have to fight. 
we have to realize that only pressure on this government can stop that, can stop their worst actions. We need to realize that there are Ontario Conservative MPPs that are vulnerable, that won their seats by small margins, and are worried about re-election four years from now, as Doug Ford does unpopular thing after unpopular thing after unpopular thing. You know, those people are concerned. So we need to rally and get to those MPPs and let them know that these are unpopular policies. Because the government will back down in some cases. For example, they promised they wouldn't touch the green belt. And then they went and they almost touched the green belt with Bill 66. But due to public pressure, they've backed off on that, at least for now. There is room for this government to climb back from the ledge. Because frankly, a lot of these policies, they don't have a mandate for. And there's concerns about their, their, their unpopularity with the general electorate. In the medium term, I do think we need to explore electoral reform more vigorously in Ontario. Because the reality is, is parties will continue to break promises that they make during elections after the election. Whether it's Ford's various broken promises or omissions, or whether it's Justin Trudeau breaking key promises uh, to Indigenous people on electoral reform and, and, and things of the sort. The reality is, is that if we have more minority governments, we'll have more accountability within the legislature in between elections. Doug Ford could have won this election under proportional representation. He may well be premier. He may well be able to make some of the changes he's proposing. But he would not be able to do the worst of what he's doing. He wouldn't be able to get away with it. There'd be too much opposition from the other three parties and that they would basically uh, act as a check and balance on this. But I think longer term, and I think I guess maybe broader, is we need to do better as citizens. We need to stop voting for parties when they offer us nothing to vote on. We should have collectively looked at the progressive conservatives' lack of a platform and lack of a budget and say, they're doing this for a reason. It's not because they're incompetent. It's frankly because they were hiding their intentions. And so you have to ask, what are the conservatives not telling us? And why would they not want to tell us? And the basic, you know, the, the basic assumption has to be, well, they're doing things that they think voters like me won't like. And they're hiding it because they want to win first and then do the things that are unpopular after we can't stop them. So we need to do better as a society to hold our elected officials to account. At the end of the day, the 2018 election is over. Doug Ford won, and he won in part because he lied to you. We can fight now and put pressure on the government. We can push for reforms. We can be better citizens. And we have to do all three of those things because in 2022, we'll have an opportunity to replace this government with a better one, one that will offer progressive change, one that will offer positive solutions, one that will offer concrete details about what they plan to do. And when that happens, I hope we take that chance and we go with that government. We can't allow Doug Ford's example to, to become the norm in Canadian politics. That is unacceptable. We have to fight now. We have to fight over the coming months. And we have to fight long term. Don't let politicians lie to you to get power and then abuse you with that power. This needs to stop now. Doug Ford has to be the last premier of his kind.